next was Six of Crows by Leaguer. <laughs> It's me, Alana. Welcome back to my channel, The Awkward Book Nerd. For this video, I'm going to be doing my August wrap-up. So this is coming kind of late, mostly just because uh, I haven't had a chance to film it. So sorry about that. But for the month of August, I read three books, <laughs> which uh, honestly was kind of what I expected after the reading rush and just all the readathons I had signed up for. So yeah. I can tell you now that this month in September, I am doing a lot better, but I won't share how better just because this is my August wrap up, not my September wrap up. But yeah, I read three books, but I will say that two of the books that I read were pretty thick books. So what I lacked in like amount of books, I made up for in like number of pages, I think, honestly, in my opinion, but I'm also like biased towards myself, so. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in and tell you about these books and what I thought of them. So the first book I read for uh, August was also for Disneyathon, which I was teaming on during uh, that readathon. And this was going for one of the props. I just can't remember which one. I know it was the first one. So the book that I read was On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. So I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. Yeah, I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. Obviously, it's different from The Hate Give, so I still loved The Hate You Give more just because of how, like, important and how much that really, like, connected with me but I enjoyed the story a lot too I honestly just love Andrew Thomas's like writing style I love her characters and so I was just super excited that this one ended up being one that I enjoyed as well I think she will probably be an auto by author for me from now on which like I knew was a thing but I wasn't sure but now that I've read this I'm like oh yeah she's an auto buy I enjoyed the characters in this I thought it was pretty hilarious uh, as you can see most of my tabs are orange which in this book meant that they were for like funny moments basically if you don't know what this is about this is about a girl named Brie who has a talent for rapping that she gained from her father who passed away when she was younger and so she currently lives with her mother and her brother and so they are not going through some really hard financial times and Brie takes it upon herself to try and basically get a record contract so she can one uh, get recognized for her rap in style and two help provide for her family and so this just touches upon a lot like of family things and friendship and honestly uh, there is a, b a lot a bit of discussion about just like racial profiling and like things that happen to uh, African Americans when that like don't happen to white kids and stuff like that especially if you go to a privileged school especially if you go to a public school like just all the different things in that aspect but I just really enjoyed this I thought it was hilarious uh I loved Brie I loved how she was so true to herself and yet still so like nerdy and like honest and it was great Malik got on my nerves a lot uh I will be honest about that I think that was the first a uh, genuine Angie Th Thomas character I have not liked. I mean, I didn't like the girl, I don't even remember her name in The Hate You Give, but like she was purposefully, like you weren't supposed to like her. Like if you did, I were gonna have some issues if you liked her. Um, but in this one, Malik was just like really just annoying. I just didn't like how wishy-washy was, so. Not my favorite, but Sunny on the other hand was like a cute little babe and I just wanted to protect him and he's so adorable and I just loved how he was just always there for Brie. Um, I wasn't sure how like the thing with Curtis and Malik were going to play out, but I was intrigued and I really enjoyed how like it was kind of like not the stereotypical thing, but also like still kind of predictable in a way too so I don't know I just thoroughly enjoyed this I recommend this if you love Angie Thomas uh she is just one of my favorites she's gonna be at y'all fest this year so I'm super excited to get this and then my two uh 
Thug Editions signed as well because then I'll have a whole thing of her signed books and that'll be amazing. The next book I finished was Stronger Than You Know by Jolene Perry. Um, I don't own the book. I borrowed it from my library so I'll put a picture up here hopefully with it. I really loved this book. I want to buy a physical copy so I can like tab it up in stuff because there were just a lot of moments that I really enjoyed. I first saw this book on Sylvia from Wish Fulfillment's review video and she rec she rated this book five stars and so I decided that it was sounded super interesting and I really wanted to pick it up because I felt like if Sylvia liked a book I probably would like it too. So I did and I thoroughly enjoyed it so much. But I really enjoyed the story and I enjoyed the characters and the writing style and I just loved the topic that it like I didn't love the topic but like I I appreciated how the topic was done I guess for lack of better words. It's essentially about a girl who grew up in a very abusive household with her mom and her mom's like many a boyfriends and friends um and she basically was just not allowed to leave the house. She wasn't allowed to really like make her presence known like she was very like ignored and isolated and abused. And so finally she the story starts with her moving in with her aunt with her aunt and um cousins and uncle. And it's basically just her like adjusting to this life where she is like free and she doesn't have to watch what she says. She doesn't have to watch what she does. Like she can thoroughly enjoy the world and the things around her without having to fear being abused and I loved reading the story because it was basically just like watching her progress into the person who she was like meant to be essentially and like working through her PTSD and the issues that were resulted from this life that she had previously and I I really really enjoyed it. I love how supportive her family was. Her uncle was my favorite person. He basically just like treated her like a dad and you could see he really wanted to like take care of her but like at the same time he was so respectful of her boundaries and her needing space and not wanting to be near him at first due to previous uh experiences with older men in her life and I just like enjoyed it so much and I definitely recommend this if you guys are looking for a good mental health read and I just loved the healthy portrayal of therapy and just ah uh, it's just so good guys it's probably my favorite book of the year and this didn't even come out this year so that's fun and I thank Sylvia so much for recommending it because or at least reviewing it because it was so so Alright, the last book that I read in August was Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. Yes, I finally started and finished this book. Uh, look at all these tabs, first of all. Like, there are just so many because I marked all the things that made me anxious, that made me, like, love it, that made me hate it. Like, just so many things. Inej and Nina are my favorites. I'm very indifferent about Kaz. I think, I have a fear that he's gonna be, like, the Darkling to me, right? Like, in the Grishaverse trilogy where I literally just don't care. <laughs> I hate saying that, but just he hasn't given me a reason to love him. Like, I don't hate him. I just don't love him. He's just kind of there at this point. Uh, but Nina and Inej are my faves. Uh, love Jesper. Love Wyland. I think that's how you say his name, hopefully. I'm sorry if I got it wrong. But I love them too. Uh, Matthias. I don't hate him as much as I did at the beginning of the book but we'll see I still have a second book to read before I can give you a thorough uh <laughs> final definitive answer on Matthias but I don't know yet I just loved this story I love Lee Bardugo's writing she's probably my favorite new author of the year I will say for some reason I think I enjoyed the Grishaverse a little bit more 
but I don't know why and I can't like explain why it's just like the feeling that I had after fi finishing this I will hold that though until I finish Crooked Kingdom and then come back and reevaluate how I feel I don't know when I'm gonna get to Crooked Kingdom yet just because I don't own it and I I'm gonna probably borrow it from the library and I'm just not like at the point where I want to do that yet so we will probably wait a bit but I'm really glad that I, I feel like I've made such progress on Leigh Bardugo books this year. Like I remember at the beginning of the year, I said I wanted to read the Grisha verse and then move on to Six of Crows. And so I've basically completed that goal. I just have one more book in this duology and I'll be good and set. And then I want to read King of Scars. And I think that's, that's it for me on Leigh Bardugo books. I don't think I want to read, uh, ninth house mostly just because uh i've heard good things i've heard mixed things honestly i just don't think it's a book for me personally just because of how heavy the topics seem to be just from hearing people's reviews and seeing what they've written about it so i personally do not think i could p handle that type of story but i will i'm also interested to like i will keep an eye out for like her other books that she like writes and stuff like that too so not writing her off or anything like that but i am excited to see what the next book holds eventually all right so those are the books that i read in august uh hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing about them if you have any questions totally let me know i guess or comments whatever if you like the video go ahead and like it down below if you all have any comments questions or anything like that totally comment them down below if you're not good at commenting, I'm going to go ahead and say leave me an email you down below. I'm stealing the idea from my friend Sylvia from Wish Fulfillment. And if you all want to see more videos from me, please subscribe down below. I think I'm going to start going back to one video a week because I kind of feel like I'm overwhelming people with the amount of videos that I'm posting a month. But I can also stay at the, at the level that I'm at, which is two videos a week. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I could do either or it's not bothering me but if you have a preference or if you have a, an opinion please let me know down below because I just would like to know that so yeah anyways you are all sunflowers in a world full of weeds and I hope you guys are having a good spoopy season